All right, let's talk about the three-point problem, all right? This is probably everyone, not probably, this is unquestionably everyone's least favorite thing about structure, but it's a critical part of the ASBOG exam. It's also a really important part if you're going to be working subsurface with wells. You kind of have to understand. So let's talk about the, my piece of cardboard here, all right? Let's say you encounter a bed that is the piece of cardboard dipping into the ground, and you are to find... The bed at these three locations, A, B, and C, okay? You maybe drill down into wells and they hit this plane in the subsurface, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you're at the surface of the earth and you found the outcrop at these three locations at different elevations. If you have this information, you can figure out the strike and dip of the plane, the piece of cardboard, okay? That's conceptually the three-point problem. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One is a graphical solution where you're going to draw everything to scale and measure it and solve for the strike and dip of the plane. The second way, not in this video, is going to show you how to use Cartesian coordinate systems. So this is a much more precise algebraic solution using Cartesian coordinate systems. There's a, sub, a couple other ways to do it. This is just the two ways that I like to teach people. Uh, I personally would use Cartesian coordinates if I ever had to do this for a job. Um, but let's say, theoretically, just stick with me. Here is the plane. You, we know the strike and the dip of the plane. But remember, a strike is a line along a plane. Here's our plane, piece of cardboard. All right, it's a line with points of equal elevation. All right. And so as I have got this piece of cardboard kind of sitting here, right, A is the higher spot, B is the lower spot, and C is the middle spot. So to find the strike, regardless of the elevation, if I can find the point along the A, B line. Now remember, in real life, you would get a distance between these things and elevation, just conceptually. If I can find the spot where along A to B, is the exact same elevation as C. We'll call it C prime. If I can find the orientation of a line that links up C and C prime that are at the same elevation, by definition, that is the strike line, right? So if this is at 8,000 feet, whatever, beneath the surface. And that's a point between A and B that is 8,000 feet beneath the surface. If I can figure out the orientation of a line that connects those up, that is the strike. Okay? And it continues forever and for always. Woo! That way, forever. And so if I can figure out the elevation distance between this line right here, let's call that C prime prime, that spot, and B... I know the elevation change. So there's B, C prime prime. And I know the length of this. All right, I know the elevation change. Delta E, I know the elevation change. I know the distance from the C prime prime to B over there, and I can calculate really quickly an angle. That is the dip angle. That's conceptually how you do it, okay? Let's do an example, and we're gonna do this graphically, which means we're gonna need a ruler, we're gonna need a protractor, and we're gonna need a nice clean space to work with. All right, let's pick something up. Let's say that we find a rock. At point A. Hooray. Here's point A. And then let's just conceptually say we go, um, then we walk 300 feet to, let's call it 300 feet, at uh, 260, okay, so 260, we're not actually going to, we're not going to draw this to scale yet, we're just going to sketch this out, 260 there, which means that's a 10 degree angle, 
300 feet, and we find rock B. It's a bad example. <laughs> okay, let's say we're drilling a bunch of wells, and we drill well A, well B, and well C. All right, well A hits the target. Let's call it depth two. Target uh, at 500 feet. Now that's down, okay? B, let's say, is 1,000 feet, and C is at 1,200 feet. Those are the depths that we drilled. All right, let's pretend we also know that from A to B is 6,000 feet at a bearing of zero nine zero okay and then from b to c is two thousand feet at a bearing of three one zero all right so the first step step number one is to draw this out to scale so i'm gonna go grab my ruler and my protractor and we're gonna do just that Okay, this is a 10 scale, so I've got to go 2,000 and 6,000. So maybe the best way for me to do this is 1 inch equals 2,000 feet. That's a pretty good scale, right? So that means this needs to be 1 inch, and that needs to be 3 inches. Okay, and I need to go from A, straw line A, to B, 6,000 feet feet at zero nine zero so that's zero 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 due north which means that needs to be yes I used a compass as my protractor Can't see. Okay. A to B. All right. From B to C at 310. Figure out 310. It's up here. And it only needs to be an inch. It's 2,000 feet. So I'll line this up. All right, so there's C. So A, here's my elevation. It's 5,000 feet down. So I would say negative 5,000 feet. B would be negative 1,000 feet. And then C would be negative 1,200 feet. All right, so the name of the game here is figuring out what is the middle point. All right, 500 down, 1,000 negative, and then 1,200 negative. All right, so the middle, middle value is minus a thousand right minus 500 is the highest point because only minus 500 minus 1200 is the low point and so the solution here is to draw a line between a and c <clears throat> and somewhere along this line is a thousand feet below uh let's just say this is sea level right a thousand feet below sea level somewhere lives on this line just conceptually does it live closer to 1,200 feet below sea level or 500 feet below sea level? Well, probably it's going to be over here. We can figure out exactly how far because 1,200 to 500 is a change in 700 feet, right? Change in elevation there is 700 feet. And we need to find out um, where it's only changed 200 feet. That would be where 1,000 is, okay? And so the way to do that, is 200 is a part of 700. Let me get your handy dandy calculator out. It's 28.5%. Okay, 
Now we can measure this full distance here. It is from A to C. It is 2.123. It's 2.3 inches. Now remember, one inch equals 2,000 feet. So that means that 2,000 times 2.3 equals 4,600 feet. That means that length is 4,600 feet. All right, and I need to figure out exactly how much of this length is back. Um, that's the distance I need to come from here to here, to go 200 feet to where 1,000 feet lives. All right, and you may be asking, do I really need to convert over? You don't actually have to. Because look, if I'm counting from here 2.3 inches, and I want to go 28.6%, there we go. I need to go 0.65 inches back. Point five point six five right there. So that little spot, 28% of the way between 1,200 under sea level and 500 below sea level is where 1,000 feet would live. So what that means is that this line right here is the exact same elevation at the surface, all at a map view. So that makes that the B prime line. What that also means is that if I can measure that, this line, by the way, goes forever and for always in every direction, theoretically, because it's a strike line. If I can measure that orientation, which I can, let's put this over top. You can measure out right there. There's 310. Each one of these tick marks is two. Two, four, six, eight, ten. How many tick marks are we below? One. Let's see, how many tick marks below? One, two, three, four. That's 300. One, two, three, four. So we're at 292. You could count up from right here. That would be 270. You get the same thing. 270, 280, 290. So we've measured that. That's the strike line. Now, the second part, we have to get the dip angle. In fact, I would go ahead and write out here S0. That's what we would call strike in shorthand. This is in the original surface, 292, and then slash, and we need the dip angle. All right, let's do the easy way here. Um, from this line to this uh well, we could draw a line at 292, but the easiest way there, remember dip is the maximum dip angle, which means it's going to be a perpendicular line. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular line that runs through point A. Right there. Perpendicular line that runs through line A. I can measure the length of that line. And it's going to be ooh, just a little over. It's a little over an inch. It's like 1.01 inches which would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,020 feet, all right? So if you think of that line, let's call this B double prime, B double prime to A. And if you think about into the ground, A is at 500 feet below sea level. This line is at a thousand feet below sea level. So what that means is that the side of this triangle there is 500. Top of that is 2020. And that's pretty easy math because that's the angle we need right there. All right. So we would use the tangent function. So tan is 500 over 2020. Oop, tan of the angle equals that. All right. 
There we go. 13.9 degrees. For some reason, my calculator decided to be in radians. I haven't used radians in a very, very long time on my calculator. So thanks, uh, Apple. All right. 13.9 degrees. And then I would recommend putting in the dip angle. This is the higher one. That's the lower one. So that is dipping towards the northeast. Oh, right there. Okay, there it is. That's how you solve a three-point problem with the graphical solution. That's the key term.